I don't know about you guys, but lately I've been feeling... <sighs> like I just want to sit on my couch and eat banana bread. Just kind of the phase of life I'm in. So today I'm going to show you how to make the most delicious, easy vegan banana bread. It requires just eight main ingredients, so it's very simple. It's light and tender. It is the fluffiest vegan banana bread you'll ever try. Incredibly moist. I know you guys probably hate that word, but... I love it. And it is really just overall awesome. So let's get started. The first ingredient in this recipe is the egg substitute. Typically, banana breads that are vegan can be a little bit too dense, like very heavy. So I wanted to come up with a way to counteract that density. And I came up with aquafaba. Aquafaba is a liquid from a can of chickpeas. And I assume that most of you have chickpeas at home right now. And I'm just going to drain the liquid into this bowl keep the chickpeas for lunch, dinner, whatever kind of meal you wanna make. And I'm just gonna measure it on my scale so I know exactly how much I'm using. There's typically two ways to use aquafaba in vegan baking. One is to beat it until you get stiff peaks, kind of like egg white meringue. And the other way to use it, which is what we're doing today, is to beat it lightly for about a minute or so until it mimics the texture of beaten eggs and then you fold it into your wet ingredients, whether it's for a cake or brownies or banana bread. Just a light whip of 45 to 60 seconds until it gets foamy. We'll put the aquafaba aside for the time being, and then we're going to start mixing our oil and our sugar. I've got brown sugar today, but I have also made this with coconut sugar. They both work really well. I do prefer to use brown sugar or coconut sugar instead of white sugar because it does make the banana bread moister, moist, more moist. The great thing about banana bread is that it's very forgiving. Many readers have made this with a third of the amount of sugar called for in the recipe and said it's still been really good. And now it's time to add the oil to the sugar. Again, a forgiving recipe, so any oil will work. If you do use coconut oil, I'd probably use a refined one because unrefined coconut oil tastes very coconutty and I think that interferes with the banana bread. So I'm just measuring out the oil to the milliliter because I like to be very precise. Now we're gonna add the whipped aquafaba into this mixture and just blend to incorporate. The next part of the liquid ingredient is some plant-based milk. Any plant-based milk will work. I've got oat milk, almond milk will work, cashew milk, coconut milk in a carton, macadamia nut milk, soy milk, they'll all be fine. And this next ingredient, lemon juice, is optional. It's not one of the main eight ingredients, but I find that when you bake vegan baked goods and you add a little bit of plant-based milk and lemon juice together, it brings a nice little lift and lightness to your baked goods. So that's why I'm adding it today. If you don't have a fresh lemon, you could also use um, apple cider vinegar. That's the word I was looking for, apple cider vinegar. Just stir this up and let it sit for a minute. We've got our three ripe bananas and I'm just gonna mash them with the fork. You probably already know this, but when you're making banana bread, you wanna be using very ripe bananas, the ones that are very spotted and brown, blackish on the outside. And if you're watching this video and you immediately wanna make banana bread, but you only have unripe bananas or a sort of ripe bananas, don't worry. You can actually instantly ripen your bananas. Take your whole unpeeled bananas, put them on a baking sheet, toss them in the oven at 300 Fahrenheit, at 300 degrees Fahrenheit. Bake them in there for like 15 to 30 minutes, depending on how ripe they already are. The skins will be totally black and the bananas will be soft inside, though you do wanna make sure you let them cool before you use them. Now we're gonna add that plant-based milk and lemon juice mixture to the wet ingredients, along with some vanilla extract. A teaspoon of vanilla. Oh, I obviously poured way too much in there. So we're just gonna have to eyeball this. I think that's right. Now we'll mix, 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 and then we'll add the mashed bananas. Time to add the mashed bananas. So messy in the kitchen. Now it's time for the dry ingredients. Starting off with some very basic, all-purpose unbleached flour. And I think this is a good opportunity to show you how not to measure flour. I think most home bakers will just stick their measuring cup into the bag or bin of flour and just like, this is your cup of flour. This is the wrong way to do it. Don't do this because you will always over measure your flour. So if you don't quite believe that this makes a difference, I'm going to weigh things for you. One cup of flour typically weighs 120 grams. Let's see how much we get when we just scoop the measuring cup in. So I'm gonna level it off. 
150 grams. 30 grams more than it should be. 30 grams is a fourth of a cup of flour, so this is actually one and one quarters cup of flour. So in this recipe, if you were to do this twice for the two cups of flour, you'd end up with two and a half cups of flour. This is why we don't scoop out of the bag. I don't wanna see any of you scooping out of the bag. The proper technique to measure your flour is to spoon the flour directly into the measuring cup. If you've ever made a baked good that was dry or crumbly, it was probably because you added too much flour. You're gonna take a knife and level it. I'm just gonna do it over the bag so any flour gets in the bag. Now let's see how much this weighs. 119 grams, so I'm off by one gram. Much more accurate. I'm gonna add the dry ingredients directly into the wet, and since I've got a scale, I'm just gonna measure how much flour I need, two cups or 240 grams. The benefit of using a measuring scale is that you can be lazy. You can scoop directly from the bag because you can just see exactly how much you're adding. And the other dry ingredients you need, we've got some sea salt, and the leavening agent we're using is baking soda. You need a teaspoon of this. This final ingredient is optional, but if you have cinnamon, I think most of you do, a little bit of cinnamon is really nice in banana bread, about a half teaspoon worth. It just smells great. And the key to a nice, light banana bread is not overmixing. When you overmix, you cause the gluten to kind of react more than it should, and it results in dense, chewy, gummy texture. So chewy is great for like ciabatta, chewy ciabatta, but it's not great for banana bread. So don't do that. I've got my loaf pan here. I've lined it with parchment paper. And if you wanted to add mix-ins, this would be the stage to do it. Gently fold it in with your spatula. Obviously chocolate chips would be an amazing idea, but I could also do walnuts or pecans, raisins, currants, but I'm gonna keep it simple, classic today, just bananas. All right, time to load it up. Final step for this recipe is to slice the fourth banana in half vertically. We're gonna put it on top add a little bit of brown sugar or coconut sugar, it's gonna get caramelized in the oven. If you don't have a fourth banana, it's not the end of the world, but if you do, it's very good. Oh no, it's breaking. It broke. It broke. Just kidding, banana bread is rustic, it doesn't matter if it breaks. Now you're just gonna take a tiny bit of sugar, whichever sugar you used in the recipe, and sprinkle it on the cut side of the bananas. I think it's a bit prettier if you put the sugared sides up and then we'll take our broken banana and we'll squeeze it in there as well. This is gonna go in the oven at 350 degrees Fahrenheit for about 45 to 50 minutes. The banana bread is done when you insert a toothpick in the center and tops of the loaves and it comes out mostly clean. Time to pop the banana bread into the oven. This is a weird accent. We're gonna put the banana bread in the oven. Now it's time to let this rest for 20 to 30 minutes before you slice it. If you slice into banana bread too quickly, it's still cooking inside, so it can be soft and fall apart. And if you need a distraction, go ahead and distract yourself because it smells really good and it's gonna be hard to avoid. How are you? What are you eating? No, you don't want to know what I'm eating. <laughs> oh, Nisha, you don't look homeless today. Thanks, Mom. I did my hair and makeup today. <laughs> You're not filming any of this, are you? <laughs> now the moment we've all been waiting for, or at least I am, because I've been waiting for this. I'm going to eat this banana bread. Look at that. It's so fluffy. Well, let's try that again. It melts in your mouth. It is so light and fluffy, so good. I'm gonna venture and say this is the best vegan banana bread ever. If you make this banana bread, tag me on Instagram so I can see it. Leave a comment below or on the blog. I think you guys are gonna love it. And if you're in the mood for even more vegan comfort food, I put together a short playlist for you. It has some of my favorite vegan comfort foods.